Wow. So let's get back. Let's go back to that question. We talked about the, you know, the client experience. Um, let's talk about how to maximize value from the perspective of, let's just say you're representing a seller, mm. Mike. So a seller comes to you and says, Hey, you know, you know, we've lived here for five years. We've made a few improvements. How can we truly maximize value so when we have more money to roll over for the, our purchase? How would you ad advise um, a seller in that respect? That's a great question. Um, the very first thing we do is meet with the client and do an assessment of their situation, of the house itself, and where they want to go. When we begin with the end in mind, it's a lot easier to focus on what's at hand, mm -hmm. at least from the standpoint of motivation. That's a huge driver. If you don't know where you're going or you don't know the house that you want to go to, in our industry we call it the cream puff house, that's the one that got away that everybody, like, man, that's the house. I would have made this move. It's worth it to move um, you know, because I found the house. So if they haven't identified the house yet, mm -hmm. it's hard to do it simultaneously until you found that house or you know yeah. where you're going. So it sounds like timing is a huge piece. Timing's and, a huge piece. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But in terms of going back to the very first thing at hand, first order of business is um, connecting with that home seller, walking through the property, going through an assessment, and we're talking about the art of and having very a lot of detail through that assessment, right? Absolutely. You always ask a tremendous amount of questions. You're trying to yeah. get every improvement um, down to you know even if a particular bedroom had been painted. You're trying to get every aspect of information you can about that house so you can showcase it and cast it in as best possible light. Absolutely, hands down. We're talking about the art of maximizing value as it relates to sellers. And part of it is going through that assessment, making those um, those prep experience, you know, those things that make the home show in its best light in terms of staging, in terms of, uh, and we're not opposed to having contractors come in to give an assessment if something is needed. Sure. But we're not talking about ripping out flooring and replacing. We're at this juncture, if we're talking about selling, we're talking about how do we maximize with what we have, right. um, unless it's a cosmetic defect that's so blaring. Certainly. Uh, we talked about it in an earlier you know, session yeah. and what that might yeah. look like. Yeah, we won't get into, for this particular session, we won't get into the, the weeds of what should be addressed, but but certainly condition of the home and updates and, and really trying to drill down to every noteworthy feature that this home presents and, and what you should shine the light on as you go to market, right? Absolutely. Yeah, and I would even say this, when you get into how, how do we, present value, maximizing value for our seller clients, which I know you may not say this about yourself, but I know a major value proposition for you and what you bring is the negotiation. Let's face it. There's a lot that can be gained or lost through negotiation and you need, a, a, you know, it sounds cliched, but you really need a seasoned pro who understands negotiation to maximize. Absolutely. And if you have someone that, um, that doesn't deem themselves to be an equity, you know, angel, if you will, or an equity, uh, preserving someone else's equity. If they're quick to concede, even from the standpoint of what they charge or the way that they approach, if they're quick to concede, you have to ask yourself, well, how quick are they to just say, we'll lower the price. We'll just accept this lower offer. Sure. Um, right. That's not doing as a fiduciary responsibility, a seller, any, you know, any favors. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if they're talking about maximizing the value of actual equity so that they can roll it into the new purchase, negotiating is a huge. So how you present the property, piece. like let's say you get it, you know, everything buttoned up. It looks great. It's, it's ready. The, the seller has done everything that you've recommended into, uh, to get the house ready for the market. Um, once you get to that point and let's say you're just now ready to go ahead and pull in the, uh, professional photographer. How much time do you need from that point to get all of your marketing, all of your, your marketing ducks in a row, so to speak, so you can properly launch the property into the marketplace? That's a great question. In general, I think we both agree that a week to two weeks is about the right time period. I think oftentimes we find ourselves having to tap the brakes lightly to examine the coming soon. The coming soon strategy has been deployed for the past several years, mm -hmm. um, and it works really well of creating a sense of what's coming to the marketplace. Yeah, yeah. people. Uh, th let me just touch on that. I just absolutely. want. To, I totally agree that the whole the coming soon aspect. It's beneficial to the seller, I believe, because 
for all of the buyers that are currently in the marketplace and in, in, in the cases we're having this discussion, there are more buyers than there are listings in the marketplace. So the buyers that are out in the marketplace, they've already exhausted all other available options yep. and they're teed up. They're, when I say teed up and ready to go, they're approved. They, they've seen enough of the market to know what they want mm -hmm. when, it, when they're presented to it, right? Hands down. Because they, yeah. they're not just starting the search. They're better equipped to make a decision when the right property comes along. That's right. And with a coming soon, you're able to make sure that any and all property, I mean, any and all buyers in the marketplace are aware of the property in a, for a certain period of time that it's coming soon on the market. So then you're, the whole position as a, as a seller's agent as in a, in a seller is you want to line these people up and give, every, give everybody a shot at it when it does come on the market, right? Absolutely. And there, there's, I'm glad you brought that up because timing is pivotally important as it relates to when the property launches to the open market, how showings are to be handled, uh, what works best for the seller and setting those right expectations. And, you know, also reminding the seller that they do live in the home and there's a, a process that we want to go through that makes them feel good and also sets the right tone and level of expectation so that we enter the marketplace. They're not being bombarded Right. with what they didn't expect. Yeah. Yeah. I, and, and I've heard feedback from seller clients in the past that have had experiences with other agencies or agents, what have you, that they just felt like it was haphazardly launched. And I think that is a detriment. I think that, that there is a wrong way to launch a property, right? Agreed. Yeah. So there's plenty of things that can go wrong. You just need to make sure that you're, you're checking all the boxes to make sure it's launched in the proper way. So on that note, it's day before Thanksgiving. You know, the seller says you've been teed up for the past week and they're like, I'm ready to go live. I want to go live. Would you say, let's wait till after the holiday? Uh, no, quit. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I would say if, if we're already in the coming soon position, we're not going to lose anyone by waiting to the following week. Yeah. You know what I mean? A hundred percent agree. And then what yeah. generally happens in that coming soon period is agents that happen to be working with buyers, they'll, they'll, they'll call us or email us and say, Hey, listen, I have somebody that may be interested. Um, can you tell me when you plan on launching the property on the open market? And so we, you know, we're very transparent. Okay. Yeah. We're looking at launching, you know, the, the Monday after Thanksgiving, and we'd love to get you in for a showing. I'll, I'll email them a link and they can go ahead and schedule a showing so my clients know when the, the, the buyers are coming through and, and furthermore are able to gauge uh, interest even in advance of it going on the market. I love that. Big business has done product launches for years. It's a marketing strategy. It's tried and true. Um, and so by positioning ourselves as launching a product, which is in this case a home that someone's going to live in, we want to think of ourselves um, as marketeers. We also want to think of ourselves as a retail component. When you go into a hotel, for example, and you spend the night there, what do you think of when you walk in? What is the experience like? Mm -hmm. If something's off, you're quick to go to the manager and say, you know, hey, the, the beds yeah. aren't made. Yeah. There's a funny smell here. Uh, you know, can you can you do something about that or change my room? Sure. And we're so accustomed to that in the yeah. marketplace as a retail component. Yeah. But but there's an expectation. There's an expectation. Yeah. Just as there is when folks are looking at our listing in direct comparison to other listings, right? Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. I think a lot of times folks think, well, they're just looking at houses on my street or just looking at my home. And buyers don't operate that way, do they, Scott? They they look no, at no, no, many yeah variables. Buyers what they'll start broad and they'll they'll narrow, but let's face it, there are certain neighborhoods that are somewhat similar to other neighborhoods that offer the same amenities and features and and aspects. So it's not just looking at a particular neighborhood. When when certainly when we value a property, we're gonna look at the, the within the neighborhood of past sales comparisons. But that's not going to be the determining factor for which a buyer identifies a property, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hands down. Um, so today we're talking about art of maximizing value as it relates to the sellers. Um, and I like how you talked about even bigger than that where we, we touched upon starting with the results. I think at the end of the day, the goal is to sell the property with the maximum amount of open market value 
with the least amount of hassle in the shortest amount of time. Certainly. Time matters. There's no question. There's a, that's another way to maximize value is transacting it expeditiously, you know, within the time frame of, of what the seller is expecting, right? Absolutely. If they say, I've got to be to Houston for a new job transfer, and here it is right before Halloween as we're shooting uh, this, uh, this session, and I've got to be in there by January 1st. Mm-hmm. Well, gosh, if the average days on the market in that community are 90 days, yeah. we're actually behind. Right. Yeah. There's no question that that is a part of the methodology to identify how to meet the goals that our sellers have in mind. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's go ahead and look at the average days on the market. Let's look, let's look you know, furthermore at how quickly homes are, are selling, which homes are selling, where are they priced amongst the competition. And and obviously we feel like we have a very, very strong ratio on um, a list to sale um, in direct comparison to the market. I'd Absolutely. put our numbers against the rest of the market and we'd win it all day long. Um, I'm very confident that we're at a good place. We bring value in that respect. Absolutely. And that gets back to the earlier negotiating as well as pricing it well. I mean, when you have a seller, Scott, that says, gosh, Scott, you know, the range here is X to Y, but, you know, we really feel like we can push it and get Z. What how is that seller shooting themselves in the foot with that mindset? Well, I will tell you if, if, if I, in, in certain cases, I may agree that we could push it. Okay. In certain cases, Absolutely. I feel like, you know what, there might be an opportunity to set a new precedent for the community, um, or the area. Yeah. Um, but on the other hand, there are other cases, uh, where, you know, overpricing can be something that we need to, uh, you know, make stop short of, you know, we want to maximize value, but we don't want to get, out of the range of what can be justified, not only in direct comparison with the other competing properties, but assuming we do procure a buyer, we need to, if there's a bank involved, the bank's going to want to make sure it's worth at or more of what the buyer's willing to pay. And last thing we want to do is have an appraisal appraisal issue in the 11th hour. And then the seller, you know, feel, and then we have to potentially renegotiate that price and, and get less than what's been contracted. And that's not always how it will play out, but oftentimes that is how it's played out. Absolutely. And we don't run into those circumstances too, too often, thank yeah. goodness. It's all because we're doing the work on the front end. That's right. That's yeah. right. And we're keeping it within realistic. And, and I agree. I, going back to the earlier point, absolutely. If we can set a new precedent in the neighborhood, there have been many cases that mm-hmm. that's been the case because in that marketplace, we're diving deep to the trends in the neighborhood trends of what's selling, how it's selling, what was, how what was that approach like? Um, and then modeling that based on, well, this is what they did. This is what we do. This is how we can maximize the value. Positioning. So that's, that's a case by case based on positioning. Yeah. Yeah. Totally 100%. agree.